Good morning. In case you are just joining us, Karibu Tenasana, this is Good Morning Kenya. As always, it is a pleasure to have you with us. My name is Jane Mamboy. Remember, we'd absolutely love to know where you're watching us from, so feel free to interact with us. Our Twitter platform is up and running. The hashtag to get on is Good Morning Kenya at KBC Channel 1. Ever remains to be the official station handle. My handle is Jane Mamboy and my colleagues. You can find them as Dorina Range, Victor Olo, and Regina Manyara. So right now we want to get started with the first segment for the day and this is all about your health and as mentioned earlier may is um, lupus awareness month and for most people we might not really know what lupus is um, you know what are some of the risk factors that are involved when it comes to lupus so we are here today to bless you with all the knowledge that we possibly can in this time space that we have and we welcome you to share with us questions comments or any clarifications that you may be needing in line with this conversation and to help us better understand this we have with us in studio this morning professor omondi oyo who is a rheumatologist as well as the head of the rheumatology unit at kenyatta national hospital good morning Dr. good morning thank you for being with us today thank you very much for having me here absolutely are you on social media not very much. Not very much. Not very much. All right. We, we will address that after yes. the show. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's not just get straight into the details when it comes to lupus. And, but first, we want to understand the bigger grouping that it falls under. And maybe we could start by helping us understand what rheumatology um, encompasses, what it covers, what it, it's all about. Rheumatology is uh, the discipline in medicine which covers the diseases of the joints, mm -hmm. uh, the muscles, and the connective tissues. So uh, most of them are autoimmune. That means that the body, the antibodies which are supposed to protect the body, mm -hmm. attacks the body. And that's where lupus falls in. Mm. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. In fact, it's that prototype. Prototype means that it is the main one. It, if you want to study autoimmune diseases, you must mm -hmm. study lupus. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it is one whereby the body, the antibodies, yes. attacks the body. And one of the th most important things about lupus is that it can affect any part of the body. Mm. And secondly, it affects mainly young women in their reproductive age okay. and active women who should be contributing to the society or should be learning uh, in school mm. and are spending most of their time in, in sickness and taking medicines. All right. I think we'll be getting some of those factors that maybe could be putting people at a higher risk. Mm. But looking at the statistics in Kenya, from what maybe you have seen, mm. when it comes to lupus, wh what are the figures looking like in Kenya? We don't. We have not done uh, some ep epidemiologic mapping mm -hmm. of, of the various uh, rheumatic diseases. But if you look at the diseases that we treat, the musculoskeletal diseases as a whole, mm -hmm. they form uh, the, the commonest reason why a patient would seek medical attention other than respira upper respiratory diseases. Yes. So the, the overall, the musculoskeletal diseases are the most common reasons why you mm -hmm. find somebody visiting the hospital. Although lupus is inside there at, at a lower level, but uh, back pain, for example, mm -hmm. is at the top followed by the various uh, arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, which mm -hmm. affects 1%, and lupus is just close there. Uh, uh, there is it's relatively rare, okay. but very significant. Very, yes. I like the fact that you've clearly pointed that out. But now, when it comes to lupus, are there different types of lupus? Because you have mentioned that they affect, can affect any part of the body. Given that they can affect these different parts of the body, are there specific or different kinds and types of lupus? Yes, you can say that, but we have systemic lupus, mm -hmm. the one which affects every part of the body. And, and then we have what is called discoid lupus. Discoid lupus mainly affects the skin in a very severe manner. It may sound mild, but it is very disfiguring yes. and affects you socially. Then we have the, the, the type that we get in children. Uh, the, the, in, in, we call neonatal lupus, where children with of, of mothers who have lupus are born with uh, with, with congenital lupus okay. and therefore they have lupus at at, uh, at as they are born okay yes now from your interaction with the people that you have managed to interact with and especially the general population yes. how, where would you gauge the people's awareness about lupus awareness of people in lupus is low yeah. in fact the awareness 
when you are talking about lupus awareness month we are not just focusing on the population mm. we are also f focusing on the health workers mm -hmm. because the low index of suspicion and low awareness leads to delayed diagnosis and misdiagnosis mm. and sometimes under diagnosis because somebody with lupus who has got the vague symptoms presents to a health center yes and uh, it can be see he, he said to have typhoid to have malaria mm. to have hiv it has symptoms that mimic other conditions yes it can present in any house so you must ah. be very have a high index of suspicion so the awareness is low even among health workers mm -hmm. and and that's that, that, that's also one of our focus in the lupus awareness month yes. then in the general population the situation is even worse mm. because many of the patients with lupus have been considered to have been bewitched or to have hiv mm. or to to have something which is to have injured to to have annoyed the spirits culture still is heavy rooted when it it's comes to this rooted. some women with lupus for example even among the kikuyus who are thought not to be, have cultural issues yes i thought another lady told me that uh, uh, my no, no enough dowry was not paid for me and that's why i have this disease so they had to go and pay dowry so that she can recover and so you know the the, the knowledge is low mm. but the, the knowledge is low but the problem is the perverted knowledge mm. this from this the disfiguring the knowledge to yes. to, to to create another me explanation for the condition the misconceptions um, that are thriving yes. in, the sp in the open space yeah. maybe from a medical standing how can we just try and redirect this conversation and get people on the right path when it comes to the correct information especially about a condition like lupus that has been masqueraded under so many <laughs> other taboo con topics one of the areas that we are looking at lupus and rheumatologic diseases as a whole mm -hmm. is to improve the understanding in the medical schools and health training programs yes like for example we over the last 20 years we have improved the curriculum of training at the universities mm -hmm. uh, all the universities for, for rheumatology and lupus in particular so that our patients our students and doctors who leave the medical school have a proper understanding of lupus and if they can make a diagnosis mm. and educate the patient and the family that's one step the second thing is patient education mm -hmm. so that the patient can know what they have you know the best educator is the patient yeah if somebody comes and tells you are bewitched you say no i'm not bewitched i have I lupus this and this. this is this is what i have yes. and this is how it manifests and this is what i need to take mm -hmm. and then we go to the families and 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 once we go to the families and the caregivers because it is the same families mm. who can tell you that you are bewitched i need to take you to loliondo to drink something mm. or you need to take this this concussion yes. to recover <laughs> so we th we go step by step yes. and in the process we, we are able to reach the people but finally if we if this year for example our uh, the theme mm -hmm. in the, uh, the in the uh, world lupus day yesterday is fighting lupus together mm. and the idea is to uh, it's a special day for caregivers and the patients to be educated yes. on lupus and um we want to fight lupus together yes everybody relatives friends and and we want to use all available channels this year we are focusing mainly on using the social media to educate people on lupus absolutely and we we, we thank you also for putting lupus on the map in, in good morning kenya you know when they say knowledge is power it definitely is and especially yes. when it comes to a condition like lupus mm -hmm. which you know sadly and uh, even in as much as we are in this 21st century people still do believe some of these conditions are linked to cultural beliefs and the likes mm -hmm. but now maybe somebody could be watching us this morning and they better want to understand you know um more about lupus and this is why we are actually using this mm -hmm. platform to just be in line with the theme for this year when it comes to fighting together mm -hmm. and and we start fighting using knowledge yes now when it comes to lupus what are some of those predisposing factors that you know um, somebody could be under that category but they do not know they could be at risk of lupus and I'd like for you to just um, earlier on you had mentioned that their young females mm -hmm. are at a higher risk mm -hmm. so does that point out that gender has a role to play when it comes to lupus yes gender has a role uh, being female is one of the biggest risk factors for lupus okay because 90 percent of people with lupus are females 90 percent wow that is a huge but figure. when we look at kenya the, the some of the studies we've done 
the figure could even be higher. Well, in the West, they talk about one, uh, nine to one, as we are seeing even 20 to one. Wow. So it is much rarer in men. So being female is, is very important. It is thought that the, the estrogen in mm -hmm. females has a role and that women, uh, the women who develop that androgens, you know, the androgens, the male hormones, is somehow protective. Mm -hmm. And that the females who develop lupus tend, are, general, are, are thought to have lower levels of, uh, of the androgens. You know, men have got both male and female male, male and female hormones. Yes. Women also have got male and female hormones. Yes. But the, the proportion that you have is what predisposes you or protects you mm -hmm. against lupus. So being female is very, is, is crucial. Okay. Now, yes. the fact that being female actually plays a huge role, there comes in the question of age. Yes, the age. Yes. For, uh, apart from being female, the other thing is the genetic predisposition. Yes. There's a genetic predisposition. Okay. And if you have, for example, uh, 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 lupus, the chances of you transmitting to your offspring is about 25%. Uh, uh, so 25% uh, chance. Uh, and and uh, that genetic contribution is important. Mm -hmm. Then being female comes next. Then when you are female, at puberty, mm -hmm. that's one of the triggers, triggers of lupus, mm -hmm. at pu puberty, or even immediately after childbirth, you can easily develop, suddenly develop symptoms that you have never had before. So what group would you group this puberty and uh, probably after having your first child, what age group have you found to be mostly affected? The peak uh, onset of lupus is from the age 20 to 30. Okay. That's where you have the majority in terms of onset. Mm -hmm. But anybody can develop lupus because... Uh, uh, the, the prevalence increases with age, mm. but the peak onset is around uh, 20, 20, to 30. 20 to 30. But that does not mean that uh, somebody less than 10 years cannot develop lupus. The mm -hmm. children also do develop lupus. Teenagers do develop lupus, mm -hmm. especially at, at puberty around 14, 15 years. But the peak is uh, 20 to 30 years. And mm -hmm. the majority of people are between 30 and 40. Okay. And that's, what, that's the importance of lupus mm. because it is affecting people like you and me who should be active in school yeah. active at work producing uh, uh, building the economy but now they are bogged down with a condition called lupus now i was going through an article yesterday and it pointed out that race could also have a role to play in this and i'd like for you to just clarify this for us because it, that particular article indicated that um, those of us with African descent are at a higher risk of lupus. I don't know if that is factual. Yes. Uh, the, in, in the studies done in America mm -hmm. and in the UK, they have found that uh, the people of um, black descent, the, mm -hmm. the American, uh, the black descent, mm -hmm. are at a higher risk of developing lupus. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they also at a higher risk of getting having severe lupus, mm. and and that's what uh, has been observed. Even in in the in, in UK, because you know they have many, very many Huge black populations. population, yeah. Uh, but also there is this issue of disparity of healthcare. Mm. So maybe they have severe healthcare, severe disease because they have got their. Uh, uh, the healthcare system has a role to play. Does not that. favor them. Yeah, they, they, they are, they are uh, not favored by the good healthcare system. Mm -hmm. We okay. don't know, but it has been observed that they have more disease mm -hmm. and uh, they have severe disease. However, yes, this was not observed in Africa. In fact, there's a time when people thought that mm -hmm. having malaria is protective against lupus because they did not see much. Uh, lupus in Africa. Okay. In fact, the situation is, was bad because, you know, the newest drug used for treatment of lupus called Belimumab, and they did studies in America and Europe. Mm. So we said, no, this drug needs to be studied in Africa. So they, they, we, they gave us protocols and we had ethical approval mm. to do it in Kenya and South Africa. Then all of a sudden they withdrew and said, there's no lupus in Kenya. <laughs> Why are you, do you want to study the, this? So that's, it's because we do not talk much about it. Yes. We have not published much about it. So race, we are now seeing it and it is not rare mm -hmm. in Africa. It's okay. very, very common and it's being observed. Perhaps many people used to pass as having been bewitched mm. or something or having strange disease or having annoyed the 
the, 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 the uh, ancestors. And, Again, and, knowledge, knowledge has helped lift that cap that yes. was there. Yes. Now, I like the fact that you've brought this conversation to the African space because th that now maybe could help explain if environment has a role to play in all this and could there be triggers in the environment that could actually trigger the onset of lupus? Yes, there is. Uh -huh. In fact, one of the strongest triggers of lupus is, is the sunlight, the ultraviolet light. For example, I know many of my patients, mm -hmm. every time December strikes, I'm always sitting on the edge because I know many of my patients who have gone for holidays, my brother mm. will call me or my colleagues, my brother will call me, we have admitted one of your patients because they are uh, overexposed to the sunlight. Mm -hmm. So exposure to the sunlight is one of the biggest tr triggers. And, and that's why we, we, we th that's one of the things that we need to watch. We advise against that you have to use sunscreen lotion, mm. wear uh, clothes or attire or even straw hats that cover you so that you don't get undue Direct exposure, exposure yeah. to the sun. Okay. And then there are other infections, in, like viral infections mm -hmm. uh, are thought to do that. And uh, even injury, any trauma, any stress mm. can, can trigger lupus in somebody who is predisposed. So it's, it's the environment is 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 a fraud is, is contributes mm -hmm. to to development of lupus okay mm -hmm. now let's come to how it presents itself so mm -hmm. again to just help um do away with the misconceptions that could be about lupus mm -hmm. one thinking it's this other condition or it's just a rash that comes and goes and maybe it's something that they've been having for a while mm -hmm. tell us a bit about the signs and symptoms that we need to watch out for that could be pointing to lupus yeah, the lupus, as I said, affects any part of the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, the signs that you need to look out for, number one, is just rash, skin rash. Skin rash, especially in the sun-exposed area, you get darkening of the face, darkening of the areas which are exposed to the sun, darkening of the arms. But any form of skin rash is possible to be found in lupus. Mm -hmm. But there are also some non-specific things like just being tired, mm -hmm. fatigue. In fact, one of the things that lupus patients complain about is tired. In fact, one of the earlier people who suffered lupus in the earlier days mm -hmm. said, I'm tired of being tired. Oh, wow. So you just feel tired. You are fatigued. Mm. But if I go systematically, lupus can affect the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It can present with headache. It can present with psychosis, just mental problems. Some of the diagnosed in an uh, unit, like I've, I've been called severally, a patient admitted a mental unit, and then found to have fever inside there, and, and have joint pains. Then I'm called, come and see this patient with mental problems and has arthritis. Then I go there and I say, this is lupus. Mm. Uh, and and, and th you can find them there. Depression. Uh, 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 they can even present with convulsions. Mm. Some of the patients were admit were being followed up as epileptic, actually have lupus. And, and then they can go to the extreme and have stroke. One of the yeah. commonest causes of stroke and heart attack is, 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 is lupus or lupus-like syndromes, especially among the young people. Okay. Yes, so that's the nervous system. Then in the mouth, mm -hmm. the lupus can come, you can present with the sore tongue or mouth ulcers. And this affect up to 15% of the people. It's a common mm. to the extent that it is one of the diagnostic features of lupus. Mm. Yes. One of the classics that you look out for. Yes. When a patient comes with lupus, they must open their mouth and you look inside. Is there an ulcer? Mm. Well, the, one of the problems with this ulcer, sometimes they are painless. They can even be in the palate oh, and the patient does do not even it. know that he has yeah. an ulcer in the mouth. Yeah. And that's one of the things we look out for. Then in the extremity, they can present with cold fingers. When they go to the, to the fridge to remove something, they find their fingers are changing color, turning blue, turning white, mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes very painful. And sometimes it can go to the extent of the fingers developing gangrene. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a, we call it Reynolds phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's one of the classic things, and they fear cold. And you advise the patients to wear gloves mm. wear gloves uh, during cold weather and also the blood is affected the patient can come with anemia 
any anemia and clotting abnormalities. They can present with clotting or blood in the legs, the DVT, mm -hmm. the clotting that you hear about, people talking about when you get COVID vaccine and so forth. It's also something that we see in lupus, okay. clotting of blood uh, and, uh, and blood anemia, dropping of anemia mm -hmm. or blood levels or any component of the blood. White cell can drop down, uh, platelets can drop down and therefore you get bleeding easily. Okay. Yeah. Now, and and f of significance for ladies yes. also is the, the, the hair, loss of hair. Oh, it's wow. very important. And that's one sometimes lupus we think is missed in men because in men, boldness is an expected thing. Mm. But for women, it is a serious thing. And a loss of hair is one of the commonest problems that we see in lupus. And I, as skin rash, as I said. Okay. Mm. Now, what are some of those complications that come along with lupus? Because, you know, um, I was interacting with someone yesterday and mm. they told me the first time they heard of lupus was a few years ago when one of the celebrities, she's known as Selena Gomez, mm. um, did come out publicly to say she has lupus and she needed a kidney transplant. And she said this is as a result of lupus. What are some of those medical complications that could affect other organs that are linked to lupus? Yes, uh, thank you. I, I'm not the, 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 the complication can be seen in any organ. Even in the heart and the lungs, oh, wow. you can get a problem. You can get any problem in the heart, chest pain, mm -hmm. uh, fever, difficulty in breathing, and also in the kidneys. Mm -hmm. the, the, it affects the kidney, what you call lupus nephritis. And this is even much more common in men with lupus. Mm -hmm. And the, you see them in, in, in a, many patients with kidney failure have got lupus. And finally, the joints. Mm -hmm. Lupus is a common cause of pain and swelling of the joints. So in the past, Many patients who are not well managed used to develop kidney problems and therefore most people used to present fast the kidney failure. But now this, with improved management and improved management of complications, mm. it, has, uh, 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 it is decreasing. But kidney problem has been in, for a long time been the leading cause of even more death in patients with lupus. Okay. But management of kidney problems has improved. Mm. But this has brought in, brought in another problem in the sense that now they're, that they're living long, you get things like stroke, mm. heart attack, th those, those, those ones now taking over. But over and above everything, although they have high uh, activity of the immune system, their, their immunity is low. You know, it's, take for example, yeah. in a town, where police are fighting among themselves mm. or fighting mm. fighting among themselves the thugs now will just Thrive. get a feel day yes so because the antibodies are involved in fighting the body the bacteria that cause the infection having a field day in the patients with lupus and therefore the leading cause of death all throughout the, the years has always been infections. Okay. Yes. Now let's get to the management and treatment options that are there available mm. for lupus and especially here in Kenya. Mm. Uh, let's start with the treatment options that are available. In fact, these days you, you say that the world is a global village. Yes. Whatever is available anywhere is also available here. Okay. The only problem is that who is meeting the cost. But number one, we deal with the, the, the drugs which are available. We deal with the, the usual pain medications, mm -hmm. and which also help with inflammation. Those are available in Kenya. Then the steroids, which we use to reduce inflammation in the kidneys and the joints and other organs. You know, when they have severe disease, we use steroids mm. to help them. Then the other one is anti-malarial drugs, the hydroxychloroquine. Ah. This one, which was uh, initially taken from us. In yes, fact, when COVID really came and it went to COVID, it brought severe problems for our patients with lupus. In fact, the price was escalated. It used to cost 20 shillings per tablet. Mm. It went up when they had the first wave of COVID to 90 shillings. But it has not come down in spite of the fact that it has been found not to be useful in COVID. People made, made, a, uh, it was, uh, made, made a kill mm. with antimalarials. So chloroquine and chloroquine is available in this country. Okay. Then we have other drugs, immunosuppressive drugs, mm -hmm. like azotyapine, which is available. Uh, we have another one called mycophenolate morphetil. That one is also available in this country, but it's a bit high uh, in terms of cost. The cyclophosphamide, which is used for severe disease, and there are other newer drugs, like one called benimumab. But the tragic thing in this country, for example, mm -hmm. NHIF is ready to pay for free 
for patients with lupus when they get kidney failure, they meet for the course of dialysis. But they are not ready to prevent kidney failure. We would like to urge NHIF to prevent dialysis is an end thing. Hmm. Why don't you prevent dialysis by covering patients with lupus comprehensively so that they don't have to reach dialysis? Before it gets to kidney failure. It's like, for example, a health system, a medical scheme that is ready to meet funeral expenses <laughs> but not, does not want to prevent death. Yes. Yeah, that's how we see NHIF when you talk about lupus and rheumatic conditions. All right, and maybe your call to action to, you know, from the ministry to our viewers this morning and anyone who might be at risk of lupus, what would be your message to them this morning? What are the basics that they need to understand about lupus and not wait until, you know, it's late in as much as you might not have the information, but you can always take a step towards being your first line of defense? The first call to action is that um, we need to teach our medical students and workers bring raise their clinical acumen so that they are able to recognize lupus as early as possible mm. number two the counties need to invest in training health workers yes. and establishing centers that are able to manage uh, uh, p diagnose and manage patients with lupus mm. because one of the things that we manage uh, lupus is a clinical evaluation but also laboratory the laboratories in many parts of this country are not equipped to make a diagnosis of lupus. That's a For, big problem. That's a big problem. Somebody has to come to Nairobi or Mombasa or even Kisumu to have a diagnosis of lupus. The test cannot be done in the counties. Mm. And that's what we need to improve on. And, uh, and then some of these simple drugs are not available in the, ca in, in, in the counties. But over and above that, if you have any thing like loss of hair, joint pains, you should seek medical attention as soon as possible. And once you are diagnosed to be having lupus, yes. stick with it. Don't allow yourself to be derailed to uh, uh, some unproven remedies mm. or some weird explanations. Follow the medical treatment that you are under, at least guided by your doctor. Yes. Now, there's um, Kelly who is asking, um, how does lupus behave in children? And especially, um, just Stemming from the point that you mentioned that there, there is neonatal lupus. Yeah, in neonatal lupus, there are certain antibodies. When I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lady with lupus gets pregnant, mm -hmm. there are certain antibodies that you look for in the lady called anti rho anti -la. So this lady, those kind of women need to be followed up closely by the obstetrician and the rheumatologist. Mm. And then uh, uh, the, the, these antibodies can go to the baby and cause congenital heart block. And you are able to pick Ooh. that the, you see a, lay, a child whose heart is beating very slowly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a child is developing heart failure even before they are born. So that's how they present. And mm -hmm. when they are born, they have those classical rashes mm -hmm. that you see. Okay. But the children with lupus, uh, like three, four years, five years, also present like adults, but they have more severe lupus. Mm -hmm. And the treatment, treatment is much more aggressive than in adults. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. So maybe if you do know a child or a mom who has lupus and that by virtue of having lupus, the child could be at risk. So maybe they do need to ensure that they go for the um, antenatal clinic to just make sure that we protect the child before they get to that exposure rate. Now, that brings us to a close of this conversation. But again, we cannot finish this um, discussion without once again just taking this time to encourage people to get involved with this Lupus Awareness Month, look for as much resources as they can to empower themselves with knowledge about lupus for the general population. Thank you very much. Any message to the general population about Lupus Awareness Month? The Lupus Awareness Month, we, we, we are, it's celebrated every 10th May of the, or, or every May, but 10th May is the Lupus Day. And this is to raise awareness. And we want to make Lupus visible to the public by using the power of social media to educate the world about this autoimmune disease. Yes. And we want more greater research, more greater investment by the counties on lupus. You know, the devolution of health should give the counties 
room to make sure it's not good to say that such and such a hospital is a county teaching and referral hospital when you cannot even manage lupus. lupus. They should make sure that they can manage conditions like lupus even in the counties. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. We have been speaking with Professor Omondi Oyo, who is a rheumatologist at Kenyatta National Hospital and also doubles as the head of the rheumatology unit still at Kenyatta National Hospital. Remember, once again, this is Lupus Awareness Month, the theme being fighting lupus together. And we talk about doing what you can with what you have where you are. Let's start by getting as much information about lupus so we can help anyone who might be at risk or exposed or has lupus live a better quality of life and not, you know, succumb to some of these misconceptions and misinformation that we are having circulating about lupus. That is that in regards to this, but we have so much more coming up in not too long. But coming up next, people and politics. Stay with us. All right, so before we get to people in politics, again, a quick look on what is happening on our roads in terms of traffic. And just to remind you, we're still focusing on what is actually, or rather what is still happening right now. This is uh, along Juja Road. That, will be our f that is still our focus, rather. And just try to see if at all things have changed or is the same as how it was. At least you can remember that earlier on it was green all through. There was barely um, any kind of traffic, just on some specific sections here and there where a, there was a bit of a gridlock, but still altogether manageable kind of traffic. And this is why we did not look at any alternative routes, at least as of then. But again, to begin from where the particular road begins, that is the, around the roundabout there. This is how it is looking like. At least right now, things have changed on that section as you get to branch off to Juja Road, as well as also branching off to the other side of Outer Ring as we head over um, to all those different roads which this particular major road branches off from. This is how it is looking like right now, green all through, throughout the entire roundabout again just as i mentioned it's just on some sections where there's a bit of a traffic but at least altogether manageable kind of traffic as well as on the other side as you leave the roundabout still coming through juja road which is our focus again green all through just from the roundabout as you head over to cbd the beauty is that this is actually on both lanes so again like i mentioned this is one of those roads where we really do not expect to see um any heavy kind of gridlock simply because there hasn't been a lot of ongoing road works um and also the fact that um along this route uh, you know just aside from the roadworks which ultimately would lead to the, to the kind of heavy traffic there's also that uh, that uh, thing of numerous estates as well as uh, businesses here and there this is the small and medium scale businesses so that would be perhaps why we would see the heavy kind of traffic but at least as of now there's none of that this is as you leave the roundabout heading over to the cbd like i mentioned again the beauty is that this is actually on both lanes so on this specific one when i'm talking about both lanes just simply means as you leave the roundabout coming through using the road as you head over to city center via the Pangani intersection as well as leaving CBD coming through the same way as you head over to the other side of the roundabout and actually this continues all through one of those areas where oftentimes you'd expect to see the heavy kind of traffic is especially around just next to the Moy Forces Academy on that section but right now are still none of that moving at a swift pace all through where it begins to slightly slightly build up rather where the traffic begins to slightly build up is just past that particular school before you get to the EC um, First Avenue area and this is actually in between you know there just in between the Moy Air Base as well as next to the Easily First Avenue there that is just where traffic traffic begins to slightly slightly build up but still manageable kind of traffic hence that orange color just in a slight section next the Shell Patrol Station which is also a bus terminus that is where there's heavy kind of traffic not moving at a standstill but also it's because it's next to a bus terminus that is why we are seeing that kind of gridlock there but away from that still coming through the same route moving at a swift pace again around the roundabout them uh, the, the, the Mlango roundabout that is also where it really there's really a heavy kind of traffic and this is actually throughout the entire roundabout now when we talked about roadworks, you know, not being a, a lot of roadworks around this particular route, unlike many roads in which you've seen, this is just one of those areas where there had been a bit of ongoing road constructions just around this uh, roundabout. In fact, 
this specific area. So this is how it is looking like again in terms of traffic. Also around the roundabout, there usually traffic police try to see how best they can control traffic. So again, it's really quite interesting to see the kind of gridlock that we're sporting, and not forgetting the fact that again around along this route, just as you leave the roundabout, often times is also a, a good alternative route. If I can mention, this is as you leave areas around Thika Super Highway, or if at all you are leaving the same same area, which is Jiji Road, branching off from the roundabout as you head over to um, to Thika Road. So in terms of traffic, this is how it is looking like. A bit of a traffic gridlock through the entire roundabout. In fact, in some sections moving at a very, very slow pace. This is as you leave Juju Road coming all the way to the city center. This branches off all through as you head over to the CBD via the Pangani intersection. But also at least the good thing is that where well, there's really that kind of heavy traffic is just specifically around the roundabout. Past there, still sticking with Juju Road, moving at a very, very fast pace. No traffic at all. And again, it's also interesting because it's day two of the opening of school. So most of what you expect to see on major roads, key among them being this one is that kind of heavy traffic, but there's none of that as well, moving at a very fast pace, and this is also being witnessed around that Juja intersection. I mean, around that Pangai intersection, rather, as you come to the city centre. So again, if you're using this route, going about your businesses, this is still the best time for you to do that. And also... If you're coming from Fika Super Highway, given the kind of heavy traffic, especially around Muthaiga roundabout, uh, Pangani area, still this intersect uh, around uh, the Pangani gas remains a very, very good alternative route for you to use. So let's try and look at another alternative route for those coming from Juja Road. If at all you do not want to make do with the traffic around the Mlango, Mlango roundabout, given the fact that this is just still as how it was, this is the easily fast avenue. You can use that as one of your alternative route as you head over to the city center and this is how it is looking like in terms of traffic at least as of now still focusing on what is happening along um, Juja Road given that that is our focus this Tuesday.